The Raptors have not given me anything as of late to cheer about, so the Leafs deserve one of these. The Leafs win it in overtime, 4-3 over the Winnipeg Jets, and what a game it was at Scotiabank Arena this evening between the Leafs and the Jets. I read some comments in the last video saying the Jets deserved the game. I don't know what people are smoking if they think the Jets deserved that win. Um, those are probably the people that thought that Line was better than Matthews, and we all know how that's turned out over time. But let's break this thing down because once again, the Leafs flat out dominate. Like, full on. The chances department were through the roof. The Leafs flat out dominate the Jets. It's not even close. But Connor Hellebuck, I don't know what this guy is on. You're Look, it's one thing being a Vesna Trophy winner as he is. But it's another thing doing what he did today for most of this hockey game. Keep the Jets in this. Kept the Jets in the air. Problem, they had a malfunction. And it crashed and burned. Because the Leafs finally found a way to score. And that was the end of it. The Leafs win it, like I said, 4-3 in overtime. And what a goal from Austin Matthews. We'll get to that very shortly. Let's start right at the beginning. First period. The Leafs, again, peppering some big quality chances right away on Hellebuck. Can't find a way to beat him. And then Nikolai Ehlers scores at a 2-on-1. And I'm like, Freddie, as my... It was a beautiful shot from Ehlers, but it would have been nice to have a save early in this game. But it's okay. But you're down one nothing, and Leaf fans instantly think, "Oh God, now we gotta, now we have to score on Hellebuck right now." And that's what it ends at, at the end of the first period of play. It's a one nothing lead for the Jets. In the second period, three fourteen into the second period, a point shot from I think it was Austin Matthews or Morgan Riley. I can't remember who it was. It had a four in the back, so it was either Riley or Matthews, and it drops down to Mitch Marner, kind of slithering his way through the front of the net, he finds the loose puck and backhands it past Connor Hellebuck. The Leafs finally beat him once at least. And Mitch Marner, who's, who played really well in the last game but couldn't beat Hellebuck, finally beats him. You see the emotion on Marner after that goal. And the Leafs have tied the game at one. Great stuff. Problem. Seven minutes after that, the Leafs get snoozing again. Two on one the other way, and a beautiful goal yet again from Nikolai Ehlers. Nice feed and a beautiful shot. I cannot blame Freddie for that. It was a one-timer on a two-on-one, and it was an absolute ripper. And the Jets now have a 2-1 lead, even though the Leafs are dominating. This is insane. And as the, look, from that goal, from that goal onwards, I don't think the Jets had another shot the rest of the period, but the Leafs had like 10. And they still could not be Hellebuck. But I'm not talking just 10 shots on goal from the point right to the chest, smother it, face off. No, I'm talking like high grade, high quality chances. And it was insane. I felt like this guy had a magnet attached to him. It was insane ridiculous and the Leafs go into the second intermission having played insanely good hockey but you're down 2-1 somehow because Connor Hellebuck is saving these Jets right now and standing on his head in the third period the Leafs early on still can't score and I'm thinking to myself is this literally how this is gonna go? This is Leafs hockey, right? They give you it and they're like, you're pulling your hair out because you're like, we can see them trying so hard, but they can't score. Then John Tavares, a nice little move, and did you see the pass? He kind of reached around the defender and a nice little pass cross seam to Willie Nylander who buries it past Hellebuck to tie the game and instantly, Instantly when Nylander scored that goal, I had an instant thought. Kevin Garnett, anything is possible! I had any, I, that was my in, instant mindset because holy smokes, you can actually score on this guy. He's not on roids. I'm not saying he is, I'm just saying the way he was playing, it seemed like he was. And you've tied the game at two. The Leafs have had some energy now. You hear Willie after he scored the goal, firing some, you know, firing some F-bombs out there. But I don't blame him. Tied hockey game at two apiece. The Leafs have their legs still. And they're continuing to pressure and pressure. And Hellebach pulls a puck off the line with his stick. Because why not? 
But then, great forechecking pressure from that third line of Engvall, Kerfoot, and uh, Ilya Mikheyev. Engvall gets in there, knocks the loose puck away. Kerfoot gets the puck behind the net in Gretzky's office. What does he do? He centers it to Ilya Mikheyev. Again, I'll say it again. The Jets have not played well. They have, uh, look, I, they have not played good hockey the last two games. The only reason they've won and got points at all is Connor Hellebuck. Because they left Mikheyev alone in front and he gets the pass from Kerfoot and buries it. Pass Connor Hellebuck, Mikheyev of all people who has not been able to score all year. And Hellebuck, who's been stopping every puck he sees. How does that work? But I don't care. The Leafs now have a 3-2 lead. By the way, on Marner's goal, Matthews and Brody get a point, get assists. On the Nylander goal, Riley and Tavares get points. On the, I think it was Brody with the point shot. I don't know who the hell it was, honestly. And on the Mikheyev goal... The guys I was just talking about, Kerfoot and Engvall get points on that one. The first, the Nylander goal was at 629 of the third period. And then Mikheyev scores with 12, uh, 12.39 into the period. The Leafs have the lead with under 10 to play. Can they hang on? But let me let me backtrack a little bit. After that Nylander goal, right, I'm hyped, right? I'm, I'm, I'm out of my seat. I'm off the couch and I'm losing it, right? Because they finally score. They've tied it. Then Bogosian takes a penalty. And I'm like, I love what Bogosian's done all year. But wouldn't this be Leaf-esque to tie the game and feel on top of the world and then, nope, there you go, power play goal, you're down again. That would be so Leaf-esque. But they do a good job. They kill off the penalty. Freddie makes a save or two in there, so it was a good job by him. Marner has a shorthanded chance. Kerfoot had a shorthanded chance that literally almost redirected in past Hellebach. But of course he makes the saves. And then McKayev scores to give the Leafs the lead. I'm like, okay, now you have the lead. So let's hang on here. No. No, they couldn't just do that, could they? With under three minutes to play, Paul Stastny tips in a point shot and we're tied at three. Again, I'll say it, the Leafs have dominated play, but it's a 3-3 game. And I know I talked about him in the last video, and I know I tried to be easy on him because I, 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 he's had a great season, but Justin Hall... What the hell was he doing on that play? If you guys want to go back and watch the replay of that Paul Stastny goal to tie it, watch Justin Hall, right? Watch number three, Justin Hall. He kind of just stands in front of Frederick Anderson, curls out towards the shot, doesn't get in the lane, but just kind of stands there. And I count three jets that are not taken by anybody. One is Paul Stastny standing right in front of the net. I'm thinking to myself, okay, Justin Hall, if you're trying to block the shot, I understand that. But if you're trying to block the shot, shot damn well get in the lane and block the shot. Don't just stand there like, oh, if it hits me, it hits me. Because it didn't. And the guy that you should be glued to in front of the net, tip the puck in. I don't know what he was thinking there. He didn't take anybody. He didn't take the shot. Who can back him up there? I'm not really sure. Well, he was playing a position. He was playing the angle of the pass. You got to play a man here. They have an extra attacker. You got to get in the shot lanes. You got to protect somebody. You know they're going to try and tip a puck in because they've been doing it all the past couple games. They've been deflection, deflecting shots in. You got to find a way to get in the lanes. But he didn't. And they scored. And we go to overtime. <sighs> the Leafs can't win it, lose this in overtime, right? Can they? In overtime, right, they go with the three forward group. And they get the puck in the Leafs' end, right? Puck goes into the corner. Riley goes after it. And then Paul Stastny thinks he's a flipping lumberjack out there. And you guys ever watched the movie The Benchwarmers? You know that You know that part where it says, uh, hey, it's not a sword. You're not a sword. That's what it felt like. Because Paul Stastny literally goes two hand on top of Riley's stick, shatters his stick in half. Obviously, he can't play with that broken stick, so he's got to skate to the bench now. It's a three-on-two in tight. I don't know how the official doesn't see that. It's beyond me because there's only six guys on the ice. Okay, eight including the goalies, but six on the ice. I don't know how. And it's on the puck, too, where they're probably watching, but they miss it. It's okay, though, because the puck gets blocked in front, and I think it was, was it Marner? I think it was, yeah, Mitch Marner got it. And passes it up to who? <gasps> Morgan Riley, who just got his fresh stick from the bench. Up goes Austin Matthews with him. They got a two-on run. Riley to Matthews. Matthews fakes the shot, goes to the back end, and roofs it. 
I'm Connor Hellebuck for the overtime winner. Mm, winner. That's what I was going for there. And the Leafs get the W. You see the emotion in Austin Matthews on that goal because that game was a grind, an emotional, a physical grind for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Riley and Marner grab assists just under a minute into overtime, and the Leafs damn well deserved that victory. They've deserved the last three games as well. And look, some teams just, you just can't beat a goalie. You run into a hot goalie, it happens. But great teams find ways to win, and the Leafs, I got to give credit to them when they went into that third, second intermission, down 2-1, even though they've outplayed, they could have quit. They could have been like, we've done everything. But they went out there in the third and said, hey, keep the foot on the gas pedal. He can't keep it up. He can't carry the team on the back the entire way. And they kept going. They kept pushing. And they beat him. And they finally got the two points in overtime. Should have been a regulation win. But it wasn't. It's two points. And it's back into the win column for the Toronto Maple Leafs. All right. Uh, I think I talked about everything. But guys... All Leaf stuff aside, Connor Hellebuck is a freak. Like, it's insane. The guy makes every save, it feels like. And if you look at his numbers against the rest of the NHL and his numbers against the Toronto Maple Leafs, it's insane. His numbers against the Leafs like a 940 save percentage and against the rest of the league is like 909. And I'm like, how is this possible? But I don't care because the Leafs won tonight. And any Jets fans who are going to come on here and say, well, the Jets outplayed the Leafs. They should have won the game. Blah, blah, blah. Any of that stuff, because I don't know how you even had that argument at this point. Shots on goal are 38 to 27 in favor of the Leafs in this one. But hold on. I always say, shot, James, you always say shots on goal are a meaningless set. Okay, that's fine. How about we do shots attempted at the net? Because that's, you know, shots that you attempt. If you miss the net, oh, well, it's a shot, on, it's a shot that missed. <sighs> At one point in this game, and I wrote down a, a round number. I, I, it wasn't exactly this, but I know they mentioned they showed they kept showing it on the on the, on the stats on in the, while the game was going on because it was that ridiculous. It, it was probably at one point seventy shots uh, shots attempted by the Leafs and forty for the Jets. They flat out dominated the Winnipeg Jets. Flat out dominated them in all aspects, really. And and, the, and by the way, the Leafs also had three breakaways. That were stopped by Hellebuck. Some more ways the Leafs dominated this hockey game. All right? I can breathe a little bit now. Leaf fans, some more great news out of, Buzz, uh, out of Buds Nation, if you want to call us that. Nick Robertson has joined the taxi squad. Okay. We've all been waiting to see him come back up. He's been, he's been with the Marlies, and he's been doing a hell of a job down there, about a point per game down there. So he's been doing his thing, and, and, and he's ready to come back. He's on the taxi squad, what that means moving forward. I don't know. I don't know if with Kenny Agostino playing today and him not really doing anything, maybe Nick Robertson draws in on Saturday against the Jets. Who knows? But Leaf fans, what a W tonight and what a game for the Toronto Maple Leafs as they pull out the 4-3 victory in overtime over the Jets and get their 19th win of the year, 19-7-2. Now are the Leafs in the year. And they end the three-game losing streak and they get back in the win column in a big way. All right, so you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and you enjoyed the game of this evening, because damn it, that was good. Smack the like button. I do appreciate that. You guys hit the subscribe button. If you guys have not already, comment down below your thoughts on the game, your thoughts on the video. Would you like, would you not like from today's game? Let me know in the comments, guys. Twitter is down below for myself. Follow up, send me a DM, do that great stuff. Also, the Instagram link is down below as well, so follow up there if you've not done so already. And I will talk to you guys, uh, Raptors, and they play Saturday against Charlotte. Uh, they look to win a game. I don't know what else to say about that team right now. They are really struggling in all aspects. As for the Blue Jays, I'll talk to you guys. Blue Jays edition on Tuesdays. We'll break down the week's games. What a day it was for Blue Jay fans, though. George Springer getting his home run. Vladdy going three for three with a home run. A three-run absolute nuke. He absolutely crunched one. And, and a lot of big games for the Blue Jays today. So great stuff all around for the Bluebirds in the spring training. As for the Leafs, as I mentioned earlier, they play the Winnipeg Jets for a third time now. Yeah, we're going to see Hellebuck. Probably again on Saturday night, 7 p.m. puck drop there. The Leafs looking for two in a row and to win the mini three-game series, two games to one over the Jets. On Saturday, 7 o'clock puck drop there at Scotiabank Arena. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Talk to you guys then.